This conference will now be recorded. Okay. All right. So today we're going to talk about cut work. And I suspect all of you are familiar with what cut work is, but I'm going to show you a couple examples. This is oh, what great. I'm going to call basic cut work, which means that you take some fabric and in your in using embroidery, you um, outline an area with then it gets cut out and um, Debbie, will you uh, mute your mic, please? Sure. Um, it gets cut out and then it gets in, embroidered over to uh, hold the empty space together, if that makes sense. And it, um, cut work can Im incorporate um, stuff that are different embroidery techniques like applique and um, so forth. And when you do cut work, you don't have to have holes that you can stick your fingers through. Um, you can put other you can put a, a sheer fabric behind your cut work, which helps to stabilize it a little bit more and in some ways can enhance your cut work by having um, some extra fabrics behind the cut work. And um, I mean, some of the cut work designs that we have are, are pretty 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 or they're very pretty um and this is a booklet when we used to buy design collections um they would come with a booklet that showed you each design and then for each design there was a let me call it a recipe for stitching that design out plus um all of these <clears throat> booklets had a symbol chart uh, which is told you what those different symbols and the little icons if you will meant and those are similar to what is in the in your embroidery sampler book you've got a couple pages in the, the front that show you what the various symbols are that are used in your different embroidery designs. And down here at the bottom, there's one for cut work with scissors and cut work needle embroidery. So if you're not familiar with those symbols, you might want to have a look at those. Okay. So let me move this so we can see the screen a little better, but not too far. Okay, hopefully that's most of it. Mary, you can tell me if I get off on my screen again. All right, starting in with the handout. Um, if we're in our home screen and I'm on an icon too, um, so Sandy and Liz, yours is going to look a little different, but yours is going to look exactly like it is in the handout. So we want to go to uh, we want to go to our home button, I'm sorry, and we want to go to our help center, which on your, <clears throat> on the icon, you have a little house button for your help, or your help center. We want to go to techniques and tutorials. We want to find embroidery techniques. And in this list of embroidery techniques about halfway down here is cut work embroidery and when i touch that it brings up three categories of different kinds of cut work that we have designs and tutorials for the first one is cut work with scissors and when i select that I'll get rid of this because it'll come up every time if i don't um, when the tutorial comes up, you have a, 
it comes up with your instructions and it tells you how many steps of information it has for you. The other thing it has is content. And when you select content, then it's going to show you all of the designs that are in that category. And this is it's this is Cutwork Scissors. So it shows you the eight designs that are in that category. And those categories are exactly the same whether you have an icon or an icon two. All right. They will, those categories for scissors on the icon has eight designs. There's the same eight designs are in your icon two. So if you want to use one of those designs, you're just going to touch it and hold it and then it will load it into your embroidery edit screen. And this one happens to be a pretty small one. And you could change, if you wanted, you could change your hoop to be a reasonable sized hoop for that design. And when it's the cut work with scissors, if you look at your colors, you have two colors, um, and they they happen to be this the same color. And if uh, when I'm doing something that is a cut work uh, design, I like to use um, the same color for that whole cut work process, even if when I have um, different colors within the design or I have different um, parts of it, of the cut work that are different colors. I like to make my thread for that part of the design the same all the way through because um, <clears throat> the first thing it's going to do, and let me go ahead and pretend we're gonna stitch this out so I can show you. All right, make yourself happy. Okay. All right. All right, I have it in ghost mode. So you can see that the first color is going to just stitch out an area with straight stitches. That those straight stitches define our cutout area for our design. So this being a scissors design, you would, it would go ahead and stitch that out and then you would very carefully cut out those inside those stitches, being careful not to cut the stabilizer beneath the design because you need that stabilizer in there and you're using in general you want to use uh, a water soluble stabilizer and then the second color for that embroidery is your satin stitches and that's all there is to that particular design which <clears throat> I'll go back and do in a bit here so you can see that in operation okay all right that's the first category that's with scissors if you want to use um if we go back to our um technique and go to our cut work needles category. Then again, we have different steps in the tutorial and our content now, we have 18 different designs. And those 18 designs are the same whether you're in the, um, Icon or the icon two, they're exactly the same. So we haven't, they had, did not add more of them 
in the machine. If you want need more designs, want to see more designs, you can always go to the MySonet library and search for cut work in there. Then there is one more category of designs, and that is called the eyelet. And those are designs that have the little round holes that you're going to use an eyelet cutter, which has just a, um, a sharpened hollow tube that will um, cut the center out of those designs and make you little peepholes or eyelets in, in your fabrics. And again, those are exactly the same designs, whether you're in the Icon or the Icon 2. The extra piece of paper that I sent out yesterday and revised this morning is a chart that tells you down at the bottom, it has the eyelet category and it tells you for number one, if you wanna find that on your machine, it's in the mini category, which is um, the number 11 behind it is, I'll tell you in a minute, <laughs> but on the icon and the icon 2, they're the, the same number. The only ones that are really different are up in the needles cut work section if they are in the section number 2, the FOF exclusive ones. Then the, the number on in your machine is different whether you're on the icon or icon two. And the numbers I'm referring to are the numbers in the book. For instance, the number one eyelet is in the mini section, which is section 11 in your book. And it's the 11th section on the machine, but the machine, when you're picking designs on the machine, you're picking based on the name of the category, not a number. So, come on. That's why I put mini on there, but in your when you go to look at them to see your information about them in your sampler book, the minis are, ne are section 11. So number 49 in your is the same here as, nope, wrong, number 48. I picked, you know, I did number two instead. Okay. So Judy, in the book, they don't give you any indication that that's a cutout, do they? That that's a, that's an eyelet? No, they don't. Not on those, they don't, do they? Yeah, okay, thanks. They don't in the mini category. In the other categories, yes, they do. Um, and if the eyelets are combined with another design, like if you look at number three, but that's, okay, that's eyelet, okay. But if we load number three, um, it has eyelets in it. However, it the cut work actual, you know, cut work part here in the center and on the ends, that's not done with the needles. That's in the scissors category. So, um, and in the book, and I forget which one that is. Hmm. Um, 102, we're in three. Okay. And in the icon book, not the icon two book, but the icon book, it's still arranged by size. But if you go to the back part of your book to look these up, that's where you're going to find the instructions um, for these different designs. Like, let me find this one. There we go. Here, 
this one that I have loaded on my screen is uh, number 3105. And if you look in your sampler book, then it shows you uh, color change by color change what's happening. And if you from four through seven, you see a little circle there. And there's a little icon down here that says the circle means you're going to cut an eyelet hole. And that's that's one of the reasons I made this chart for us is that you don't know from looking at the design in the content section where that design is or you know how many threads you're going to do or any special techniques that you're going to do with it so that with the the reference chart here you can look it up in your book and and follow that along as you embroider it out to see what you need to do each step of the way. Does that make sense? Does that help? <laughs> and Absolutely. the Icon 2 thank you. The Icon 2 book is arranged in number sections, so um, it's a little different than the Icon book. But if you just go to the back of the icon book, only the ones that need some special technique are listed back there, and they are in numerical sequence. All right. It just, I always wanted, I want to see that when I go to embroider a design out. I want to see if there's a special technique or if I need to do something different with it. Okay, so that's our three types of um, embroidery designs. Come on. No, don't move. There you go. Thank you. So um, let's see. I suspect you all know how to... Um, work your way around if you're doing your tutorials when you go into your help section and you bring up a a category and you load a design and then clear your screen but then you, you want to go back and not have to start all over at the very beginning of finding the tutorials and, and getting the right category and stuff. You have an open book icon. Um, and on the icon, it's up on the left-hand corner. On the icon two, it's up here by the question mark. That's going to take you right back to your tutorial screen where you can see the content or you can see get into your instruction again. Okay. Whoops, I always do that. All right. Come on. Okay. And then um, at number three on page three, um, it wants you to sew out a design that is um, the cut work um with the scissors and i'm going to do that just to show you real quick and then we'll move on on the top of page four they put this uh, little tidbit in about um being able to find designs on the sonet library come on oh Okay, and it will bring up your designs and you can limit what size of design saying you, you really only want a little design. So if I put in 100 for my width and, and I put in, well, I thought I put in 100 for my height, come on. What are you doing? No, I don't want 10. No. 
Okay. So then it just uh, filters my designs by that size. So I can I could pick knowing that it would fit the space that I have or whatever by uh, filtering it by that. And then there are categories you can um, have it sort by also. If you want the newest one, then you might want to go by publish date and um, it would put the, the newer ones at the top. And I that may be the um, the default on it. You could also um, tell it that you only wanted something that was um, one color. And as you see, it, it, it changed the sequence of them now that this first one is a one color or a two color. And um, even and though these June, look like they might be just one color, they really have more than one color in them. Yes. Hey, Judy, can we do that same thing on our icons? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. You have so to Judy, do it on the computer. Um, when I'm on my machine, I can't, when I touch the width and height, nothing happens. I can't put anything in there. Are you touching the word, not the arrow? Yep. Well, touch and hold it. And you should get your number pad up. Not, don't just tap it. Touch and hold. Okay. Did that hmm. help? No, nothing happens. The only thing that um, I can get a keyboard up for is if I put search for designs. Well, you have to have the cut work name in and then hit search. Oh, okay. And then then your width and heights become active. Oh, okay. I, I did that too. Thanks. <laughs> so don't feel bad. Uh, Debbie and Judy, I find that if I hold it, it doesn't come up. If I tap it, it does. Okay. Yeah. And it seems that to me on the icon too, the taps work better than the holds. But that's maybe just my machine. And a lot of it is my fingers are usually cold. <laughs> I hear that. Yeah. I got it to work right. You did need to put cut work in there. <laughs> yeah, you do have to put your category in, even though when you first come into it, it shows width and height. You have to put your category in first and actually hit your magnifying glass before those become active. Okay. I don't need the projection. Go away. All right. So back to, um, I'm going to go back to my, why do I have my keyboard? I don't want my keyboard. Okay. I want to go back to my scissors category, pick my content, and I'm going to do that little bitty flower because that will be not take not so long. And I don't know why my keyboard is still up. Go away. Huh. Keyboard. There you go. Go goodbye. Okay, I want my 80 by 80 hoop. And I want my little design in there. Okay. Now we're going to go to stitch out. And I don't need that page anymore. Okay. All right. There we go. Here, let me see if I can move this so we can see what it's doing. All right. Um, we're going to 
stitch this out. And I have water, um, like Aqua Magic stabilizer in my hoop underneath my fabric. Okay. All right. So now there we go. So now what I want to do is to cut my fabric out in between my stitching. And I found when I want to just snip the top fabric. With these scissors, I can just stand it up like that and snip, and it'll pucker the fabric enough that I can make a little, um, it makes a little hole. And move I your hands towards the machine a little bit. We can't see. Oh, there, that's great. Thanks. Okay. All right. Did you, were you able to see with the scissors where I, I just stand them up and let it? pinch the fabric and then I can make my start hole. And you want to trim, this is like a, you're doing an applique backwards, if you will. You want to trim pretty close up to your stitches, but you want, definitely do not want to clip your stitches at this point because those stitches are stabilizing the fabric. And you can see here that, you know, that's what I've done is I've cut the fabric out, but I haven't cut out the stabilizer. And you're in my way here. So you would just go around and cut out each one of the, thank you, Mary, for telling me. I forget the, to check the computer sometimes. Cut out my little... flower petals here and I don't need to cut them all out you can you see what what's happening is that I've cut away the fabric and all I have left is the stitching and the um, stabilizer so when I put my hoop back on and I am ready to stitch out color number two Please ignore the fact that I didn't stitch the or clean out the um, fabric on some of those petals. It'll come back and do an underlay stitching for the satin stitching, which it's going to do to define the cut work. Hey Judy, my mother did this by on uh, by hand. I'm sorry. My mother did this by hand on a huge tablecloth. <laughs> yeah. This is 
this is still part of the underlay. It, it's doing a lot of stitching around that raw edge to make sure that it, it stays. Now this is the actual satin stitch. And it would just continue on until it had, you know, done that for all of the um, for all of the petals on the. Uh, thank you. <laughs> on the flower, and then when with the the stabilizer being a wash away stabilizer, the minute it you would. Um, put some water to it, then you would have an actual hole there. And then that would that would be your cut work. Okay. All right. So let's talk about the cut work needles. Um, at, at one point, in our lives when they and it was it was shortly after the cutwork needles like came out i believe that a set of cutwork needles came with your machine um that doesn't happen anymore um they are sold separately and they come does everybody have cutwork needles if you don't have them, let me know. But I'm just curious to know if you yes. have them. Yes. Okay. Deb, yes. you have them? I do. I think I think my set only has whoa three needles in it though. No, it well, has four. No, I have them. You have yeah. four? That's good because that's how they should come. Yeah. <laughs> and I believe the handout says something about. You can buy individual needles, but that's not true. You need to buy the whole set. So um, that's on top of page six. It says individual replacement needles are available, um, but that's not so. It would be nice because um, although you have four needles, you don't always use all four of them on a particular project most of them will basically use one and two and the needles are color coded there's a red one a yellow one a green one and a blue one and that doesn't come here where there's some light and they basically they are a regular needle that is much shorter a regular needle is this long and our cut work needles are only this long so it's like they took a needle and cut it off um, however a regular needle is going to have a um, channel in the back of a groove in the back of it and in or in the front of it these do not they just have a solid round um, shaft portion down here and they've been cut off and then the difference of the needles is that don't fall out please um, that they are sharpened to different angles and i always wanted to have a picture of that so i made one and this is a picture of the various needles. Number one, red needle. It's sharpened, but it, to based on the this being the flat side, 
on this chart, I've turned them around so I'm seeing the back of the needle. The angle of that needle is now a 45 degree angle. A number two needle, when you're looking at the back of it, the, the sharp part is straight across. A number three needle, when you're looking at the back of it, is 45 degrees to the left rather than to the right, like the red needle is. And the blue needle, when you're looking at the back of it, of it the sharp part goes straight up and down. And the reason for this is that if you're cutting a shaped hole, something that's circular or you know has some squiggles and so forth in it, that the needle can be very accurate as to how it cuts the fabric to fit that hole shape. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, Judy, I missed. Where did you get that picture? I mean, I know from the packaging or what? I made it. I took a picture and took it to my computer and did this. I can send you copies of it if you would like. Are the angles on the packaging? No. Oh, yeah. If you would send it, I'd appreciate it. That's great. Yes, I, please you know, do. I've always wanted this. <laughs> and I guess it's, you know, if you want something, do it yourself. Yeah. How do you know, how do you know which needle to use? Well, the all right. When you get a design, and let me pull one up on the machine because it's, that's going to be easier. So let me go back to here and I'm going to pull up the one that we're going to stitch out. Okay. When you bring up your design and let's make that in a decent size hoop. Come here, toots. And we look at our colors. The first color is thread because it says RA, right? The second color is a red cutwork needle. And this, it's red. It shows a picture of a needle and it says INCUNE1. The INCU means Inspira Cutwork Needle. And then it's the number one needle which on your package, you have numbers, one, two, three, and four. And um, again, the color coding, one is always red, two is always yellow, three is always green, and four is always blue. So for the first cutwork needle, you would use the red one. For the second one, you're gonna use the yellow one. And then you're gonna go back to thread. Um, when you get your, if you buy the cutwork needle kit, all right, um, you're gonna get a CD, and in that, on that CD is their designs. There are needlework or cutwork needle tips and there's a pdf which you can print out and it gives you um it shows you the design and it gives you the stitch out recipe i like to call it for each one of the designs that it are on the disc okay it contains a package of needles it has the CD and it also has whatever you want to call this. This is called, mostly called a multi purpose tool. There. It's this little gray thing that comes with your machine. So if you buy a cutwork needle kit, you'll have two of them. And the reason that you get it with the cutwork needles is because these little rascals are sharp and so to put your needle in your machine you want to put it in this hole with the flat side the hole is has a flat side on it you're going to put your needle in that 
and that's how you're going to put your needle into the needle clamp of your machine so you don't butcher your fingers trying to put your cutwork needles in. Okay. So that comes in the package if you buy the cutwork needle kit. And um, it also has a little booklet that um, has a, some information about it. Um, I hope they've changed the little booklet because they had the numbers backwards to start with. But it shows you what's in the package and it shows you the symbols for that you'll see in your stitch recipes. This one is very important because you should never resize or um, mirror your cutwork designs. You should leave them as is. All right. It shows a little picture of using the little multi purpose tool to insert the needle, and it shows the symbol <clears throat> for a scissors cut work, the needle cut work. And this one also is extremely important, this one down here at the bottom there. Because once you've done the cut work, you've got probably accumulated a lot of fuzz down in your bobbin. So that little brush is a reminder to clean out your bobbin case after you've done a cut work project. Okay. And the reason that I have this piece of faux leather here is that there are designs um, in the cut work section and one of them comes on the CD that um, is in the cut work needle kit where you can, um, let me show you this picture. See these? These things here, these are, um, they used them as on a hair clip and they are made out of the faux leather with the cutwork needles. So you can, you can use the cutwork needles on something besides fabric. In fact, when we got the first Epics, we made a tote bag out of this marine leather and use the cutwork needles. So they're quite versatile and kind of fun. Uh, just real quick, I'll show you the, the designs that came come on the um, disc. Let me come back just a little here. Okay, so this is this is the first one and the cutwork what is cut out is are the inside of these. Like to me, they look like hearts, but it, it could be flower petals. So that's the first design. The second design, and I've got, I printed them out in two versions. I printed them out with the software, and then I printed them out from the PDF on the um, CD. And you can see here on the recipe where the very last step, it shows you that little brush. Don't forget to clean out your bobbin area. This one is an, the eyelet design that you see here. And this one I don't have a, a good sample or picture of, but this is the cutwork needles and this little symbol right here, the little asterisk with the line under it, tells you to put applique fabric, but this is a reverse applique. So when you've done your cut work, you're sliding the, fab, the applique fabric under the hoop, and then it's stitching this like uh, blanket stitch around the cut work holes and anchoring that applique fabric to the back of your main fabric which is kind of neat. And there are some of the built-in designs in the machine, um, the ones that are in the higher numbered section, 
which I don't see my chart right now, but there are three of them that are the reverse applique that are built into your machine. Then if you see a, a design that looks like this, which is just pretty much color, those colors are the colors of your cutwork needles, red, yellow, blue, and green. This design happens to, that's about all it is. There's the very first color is thread because it wants to put in those stabilizing stitches. And then you're going to use all four cutwork needles. And then it's done because it's going to actually create the holes in the faux leather or whatever you're, you're stitching on and then actually cut it out of the, le the faux leather for you. I was going to say something else and it went away. Um, anyhow, and then, you know, there will be some of them, this particular design, it looks like this when it's stitched out. So there's holes inside of the satin stitching, but then there's also uh, stitching around the, um, the satin stitching. And it uses, this particular one also uses all four needles um, and an applique fabric plus you know several steps with thread and then they have a second version of that same design where they don't put the satin stitching in and so in the recipe for it they've crossed out the steps that you won't do so there's a good variety you know i like the variety of designs that they put on that um, cd because that gives you a sample of all the different kind of ones that you can actually do. Okay, so are you ready to try one? Okay, so that's what I was talking about, about the 120 by 120 hoop with some um, water-soluble stabilizer and some fabric and an extra piece of water soluble stabilizer when we were when i did the design where i trimmed it with the scissors i was very careful not to trim the stabilizer however when i'm going to use the cutwork needles they're going to cut through the fabric and the stabilizer so one step after you've used the um, cutwork needles, you're going to need to put an extra piece of stabilizer under that. And if, let's see, let me find this in my book again. Dang. Oh. No, it's not going to tell me. If you find the design in your book, it's going to tell you when you're finished with the cutwork needles to put, to slide a piece of stabilizer underneath your hoop. And then the next step in your stitch out is going to be a step that is basically straight stitches that anchor your stabilizer to the back of your hoop for you. All right. So we're going to start off with um, a color of thread in the needle and bobbin. And I just, because I want the same thread in the needle and the bobbin when I go to do my satin stitch, I just do the whole embroidery that way if it's one color. 
I will, <clears throat> depending on what else is in the design, I might um, use uh, a, an embroidery bobbin, especially if it were something that had like the applique and so forth in it, and then switch my bobbin when I got to the point that I was doing um, the satin stitch for the cut work. All right. So I'm going to start off with a regular needle, just like a regular embroidery. I'm sorry, will you rewind it? Tell me again about your bobbins. And do you take the bobbin out when you're using the cut work needles? No. Okay. You don't need to. All you need to do is to take out your top thread. Okay. So that's that's the you know what they're telling us in the um handout that we don't need to take out the bobbin oh there and there's also on the cd there's an excellent little movie although it's for like the diamond deluxe or something like that it's it's the, well, because I've had mine for quite a while, they may have updated the movie, but there's a, it's a really nice little movie that they have on the um, CD that comes in the Cutwork Needle Kit. Okay, so I've picked this little, um, this little design here, which is in the content section. It's number the number one design in the cutwork needle content section, okay? And I'm putting it in my 120 by 120 hoop. And I'm ready. I've got my needle threaded and I've got my matching color in the bobbin. And I'm ready to start my stitch out. <clears throat> All right. So the first thing it's going to stitch out, which you can see here on my screen, are the the um, double run straight stitches, which I call stabilizing stitches, <clears throat> and um, to outline the holes where the cut work is going to be. All right. So Trudy, could you please explain to us again how to find this pattern in our book? I'm sorry, Lee. Could you please explain again how to find this pattern in our book? Uh, you go to the reference chart. Um, let's see. Oh. Yes, number one under needles is in section six and it's number 39, it's 639 in the back of your book. Thank you, that's what I thought, but I could, I'll keep looking. Okay, thanks, bye. Uh, well, don't look in the first section. Look in the back where they, they give you the technique parts because your book is actually in two sections. I'm looking. Thanks. Okay. And they should be in numerical sequence. It should be ones, twos, threes. You should be find it as six dash thirty zero thirty nine. I've got it. Thank you. Okay. Yes, this is what it looks like in my book. Mine looks just the same, thanks. Great. <laughs> I mean, it would be nice if they would have um, somehow given us a cross reference for these. Be or, or at least, you know, on the icon too, they have that little information button down at the bottom. If they put that in 
the the content section so we could um you know or even on the icon put it in the the content section so we could get a little more information on them Okay, now when it says change needle, it says Inspira Cutwork Needle One. So I'm taking out my, unthreading my needle, taking out my needle, come on. And when I when I take my needle out of, of the machine to put in a cutwork needle, I like to just slip it into the cutwork needle box where I took the needle out of. Then I know it's safe. So now I have my red cutwork needle, which is number one, and I have my special my multi-purpose tool. So I put my needle in so the flat side is to the end of the hole of the tool and the hole has the flat side there and then i put that into the machine and get it make sure it's up to the top nice and snug and then just tighten it up like you do a regular needle you don't need to um, use gorilla force just get it nice and snug and so now you have this little little short stubby needle in your machine and when you press go it will start punching holes in your fabric now when it cuts it's not every so often it's going to leave just a little tiny space that's still connected to the the remainder of the fabric and that's a safety feature so that if you were cutting out something really small and you cut it completely it could fall down into the machine and cause you all sorts of problems so by design you're not cutting that out completely you're going to have these little connecting places and when you're finished you will just take a pair of sharp scissors and clip those to remove that cut out piece of fabric all right, so we'll just go ahead and do num needle number one. Now it tells me it wants cutwork needle number two. So I'm going to carefully take out 
my red cutwork needle and replace it with my yellow one, which is number two. And I don't recall ever seeing a design where they used only one cutwork needle. They, um, the least amount I've seen is two. So it's going to just go around again, and this being the needle being at a different angle will make sure that everything is completely cut. And again, it's leaving those little tiny connection pieces. my two cut work needles. I'm going to remove this one and replace it with my regular needle. And I really appreciate having the extra space under here for my hand. Okay, now, now I've got my little pieces here and they, they're they not falling out um, because of these little pieces that weren't actually cut. So I'll just take my little scissors and clip those and remove my cut work pieces, which is my fabric and my stabilizer which they really like each other so i've got both things my fabric and my stabilizer were cut so i have a literal hole in my design now so that that's why i want to put in my extra piece of stabilizer under my design and i can if I have any little long threads, I can kind of clean those up a little bit. This, this is muslin, so it's uh, a bit more ravelly, if that's a word, than some other fabrics like batik might be. So I just kind of clean this up here so I don't have any unwanted threads. All right, so now I have my extra piece of stabilizer here and I'm going to put my hoop back on my machine. Oops, I see a couple little threads I want to get rid of. All right, put my hoop back on my machine, and you can see that it's positioned itself. Come on, what are we doing here? 
it's positioned itself away from the, the cut work design. Okay, there we go. All right, because it's going to, um, I'm not sure what you're doing over there. Okay, all right. It's going to tack the uh, new piece of stabilizer down. Oh, I know what my problem is because I didn't cut my bobbin thread from when I did the original stitching. So the stabilizer was hanging up on that bobbin thread. All right, I cut my bobbin thread. I put my stabilizer under there. It's nice and flat. And I can continue, and this this um, particular color, if you will, is going to do an outline stitch all the way around the outside to tack the stabilizer down, and it's also going to tack it down around each one of those holes that we made. All right? It's going to make sure that our stabilizer is where we need it to be and how we need it to be if you, it helps if you thread the needle too. Sorry. All right. Okie doke. There we go. All right. Now with thread in the needle, it's and it's it's just doing a you can see a hmm it's fine. It's doing a basting stitch just around the outside. And then it'll do a little more secure stitch around each one of the holes. But now we have stabilizer under the hole, so when it does the satin stitching around the edges, it will have something to uh, stitch into. And there, the design is divided up into um, different color stops in case you want to change the color of your threads. In this case, I'm just using one color all the way through.
Judy. Yes. Judy, Judy, where are you? <laughs> what? Judy, after it, it does the cut, the second cut work, isn't it supposed to go around and and stitch that uh, stabilizer down? Um, yeah, it does. That's the that um step right after you you put your regular needle back in and you slide your uh new stabilizer underneath it yeah. makes this stitch around the outside to hold the stabilizer down oh it does an edge around the not around the okay that's and then it, it also does one little stitch around each little hole oh it also does that yes after it does, it does this thing okay okay that's okay okay all right
Okay, it's finished. So now here's your cutwork design and the only thing that's left in your holes is wash away stabilizer. So the, when you wash it away, it will have actual holes in your fabric that are outlined with satin stitches. It's kind of a cute little design. And I, when I was looking at stuff for class and I picked up one of these um, books that I have from some of the collections, leafing through it, look what's there. It's that little design multiplied. It's kind of cute. So they've just put more of them together and then put the little these little flowers in the corners because and they well they did some other stuff too they messed with the, where the diamonds are so kind of fun to to see it used all together with a little modification. So how does yours turn out? Um, can you know? Oh, here. Okay. Yeah, looks good. Uh, yeah, I'm. This is cool. That'd be good. Um, and this would have been when we added the extra layer of stabilizer. Uh, we could have put fabric, right? Yeah, you could and have made put it fabric under there. Yeah. And okay. depending yeah. on your fabric, um, you might still have wanted your state an extra layer of, of stabilizer. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. Um, I didn't see Debbie's. Debbie held hers up and I didn't see it. Yeah, she was quick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is fun. Isn't it fun? Yeah. It's <laughs> it was way easier than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Yeah, I did something a few years ago, and I didn't realize how neat it was. I've never done it before, so it wasn't as hard as I thought. Well, that's this good. Neat. And yeah. you know, I like this. You have to just do them on tablecloths. <laughs> <laughs> you can do them on clothing and tote bags. Um, there's even one design collection where they made like insertion you know lace mm -hmm. strips um with the cutwork design or would do um some edges wow i mean just think if liz, if liz's mother would have had an embroidery machine she wouldn't have had to do all that by hand <laughs> <laughs> right and this one where you they've actually put buttonholes in with it it's pretty oh, wow. Cool. I mean, this this has got some fancy stuff in it. And it is, there were some collections. <clears throat> they came out with some collections that were cut work with scissors, you know, before we had cut work needles. And then when the cut work needles came out, they did take some of those designs and collections and convert them to use the cutwork needles. So sometimes you'll see a collection that is in two versions, one with cutwork needles and one without. Okay. Did everybody get theirs finished? Mary shaking her head no. <laughs> I think it's it's a it's a fun technique. Yeah, um, I, I'm not done. I had a little issue, but that's okay. Is it okay? Thanks, yeah. Judy. I need to go, but it, it's I always learn so much. Okay, um, just one second before you go, the project. Well, first yes. off, in your handout at the bottom of page seven, 
Right. They show a picture of a design that is, and it's number 16, so you can look in your reference chart to see where it actually is. That's one of them that uses the reverse applique. There's three of them, and they're in a kind of a set, so they go together. So you might check those out on your machine. Okay. Yes, thanks. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Well, have a good day, Lee. Thanks. I have PT, so. Thank you. Talk well. to you later. Bye. Happy right. Easter, Lee. Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Climb that mount. On page eight and page nine of your handout are some tips for using the needles, uh, which hopefully we've gone over. Um, the eyelet designs, um, some of them are strictly eyelets let's see if we go back to our our content thing and it's all right it's not going to be happy let's go back okay now go back to embroidery not going to do it okay <laughs> Okay. Okay. Some the eyelet <clears throat> designs, some of them that are um have just eyelets this number three one is in the the scissors category so it has some cut out places for regular cut work plus all the eyelets and um, you would just follow the recipe like you did for the um other ones in your book. Let's see, three is one of four. That's not in that book. What did they do with my other book? Here it is. And actually, three, one of five. This one here where it's just threads and then um, the eyelets and then manual cutting for the, the last um, three sections there. And I haven't, let's look and see. Okay. So where am I? Nine. Okay, turn off. Okay, nine, ten. They made these all these light colors, and it's hard when you to go th when you go through here to try to see what they are. So, I uh, I picked up one design yesterday when I was playing and I went in and I would I change all the colors so I could see what each step was. Oftentimes I have good luck changing my background color. Yeah, that's a thought too. I could do that. I could go to my hoop options and change my background color to something ridiculous. Well, that's not good, is it? There. Oh, okay. So they're they're doing each one of those sections separately. And um 
cutting them out. And what I want to see is they're cutting out that whole section as one big clump and then coming back and doing the, I'm going to call them crossbars um, to divide it up. But when they cut it out, they cut out the whole entire section by hand. Instead of you know having to cut out each little square, they're they're cutting out the whole one section. And that that design is a design that um, and I don't know what I had for background color. Um, that design is um, the one that was chosen to be um, used for the project in this particular chapter of the workbook and I was kind of disappointed it's a beautiful design and there's a lot of um, technique um, things besides just the cut work in the project, um, I was hoping they'd they'd use a design that used the cutwork needle, but they didn't. But there's um, the fact that they're um, building this uh, little sachet bag. They're using this design as the center attraction, if you will, on the bag. But they're also um, on the the top of the bag they're putting in having you put in buttonholes for your drawstring on your bag and they tell you how to position them and and so forth in the directions um they also have you use probably something that is very underutilized on your machine, and that is the lace edge stitches, in um, which you can certainly bring into embroidery to make a little pico kind of edge up here at the very top of the bag to decorate it, like a little crocheted looking edge, which I think is a, a nice little feature because this, to me, this looks very Victorian, and that would um, certainly dress it up and, and give it a little more interest. And, you know, it, it, you wouldn't need, you could use that same kind of idea, the buttonholes, the lace edge on other projects. It doesn't have to be this particular bag. Um, let's see. And let's see, they also have, <clears throat> yeah, they're having you use the uh, bi-level foot. So you're, you're doing the lace edge actually in sewing mode rather than bringing it into embroidery. But it's a, it's an interesting project from all of the techniques and so forth that they give you in it. So, are there any questions? Um, I'm, I'm excited, I don't want to do that. What, Liz? That design is. Deb, you okay? Okay, great. Glad to have you. Yeah, it was real fun. <laughs> to resize or rotate or do anything like that. Is that because of the angle of the needles? But I, I suspect so, yes. In the Icon 2 book, they don't mention that. 
hilarious. Um, because you can. I mean, you can resize them. It doesn't. I mean, I I haven't stitched one out, but it's not like our smart machines stop us from resizing them. Right, but I think more so um, the rotation and it's, well, I shouldn't, I, in looking at the symbols, it's actually, let me find my piece of paper here. <coughs> right piece of paper. Um, <laughs> my book I think it's 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 more the rotation and the mirroring that the, is the problem rather than the resizing Mary mm, oh I know where it was it's in this little needle kit booklet yeah what they show in here is is rotation and mirroring so i was when i said resize i was misinforming you i'm sorry well i was thinking let me go back and look i was thinking this thing we have says not to resize it too our handout is that what you're saying? Right, on page nine, the very last sentence. Mind you cannot be rotated or mirrored. Oh, it does, doesn't it? Well, I, I can understand the scaling because um, if you're you're doing thread, stretch out a stitch a little ways, uh, it's not going to matter a whole lot. But if you're trying to cut, the the cut work needle stitches are extremely. They call them. I mean, I call them stitches, but the needle penetrations, how close they are together. Your needle is only so wide, and if you space those out further apart, you may not get clean cuts. Right. And it may not I see that with scaling, and I don't know how resize unless it's just a super safety precaution to limit the amount of frustration if you resized it. If it would, I mean, it can't make those stitches longer because the, the needle is only so wide right yeah that makes sense now that we thought it through but yeah so what you see is what you get i think <laughs> if you want to rotate something turn your fabric in your hoop There's always there's always a solution, isn't there? <laughs> uh, you know, how many ways can you skin a cat? So, Miss Elizabeth, are you doing okay over there? Your mic's not on. Yes. Good. So, I how do you tell how big the design is? I'm sorry. How do you tell how big the design is? Well, you go take your little reference chart and you go to your book. Oh, okay. <laughs> or you bring the design in and you go to edit design and you make sure it's selected and you touch your scale icon and above your control wheel, it gives you the numbers of how big your design is and mine is mary when you do that are you seeing that left hand number on the width or not i'm still only seeing two digits instead of three you only see two but you know 
in the library, when you're looking at it, you can hit the little eye symbol at the bottom of this. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, okay. Oh, and yeah. it, it'll give you the design size. On the icon too, I don't remember how if you could do it on the icon. I don't know if you hit the question mark or whatever and you touch the design if it would come up. Well, okay. I mean, they'll, the best way I know is to go to edit, no. with it selected, no. and touch your scale. It should bring up the size above your control wheel. It no. doesn't work. It doesn't work on the question mark. Okay, go, but go to your little flower. Okay, Judy. Yeah. Go to your little flower and just up here on top. No, 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 your flower for your designs oh. in your, your designs in your, on your machine. Okay, the, the, the one yeah. I used first. You can't do it through techniques. It doesn't give you the little eye. Oh, okay. Let me load it. Oh, okay. I know what you're talking about. The little I, the letter I. I'm thinking physical I. Oh no, no. You have to, and you have to be on the side toolbar where you can have my sonet. Because it doesn't. It didn't show me the I there. But touch it on the side, the little flower. To yeah. Get your, and it and, gives it. Down. And then the I comes up, and it gives you whatever your machine is set for yeah whether your inches are metric yeah but you're not in the right place either okay so i got my little flower no 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 you're saying you're saying go to the, the, the yeah there now just oh. design you don't even have to load it and now go down and hit your eye Right, and it tells you how many, how what the size is, how many colors, and how many stitches. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm in, in, yeah, I'm in load. I'm loading a design. And so you can look before you even load it. Right. Okay. Oh, that helps a lot. <laughs> yeah, it you don't. Be, have I think it would be really handy if they could put that little eye in the content menu. Yeah, it would be. And I believe if you add your machine set to inches, it shows that, you know, it changes it all over, I'm pretty sure. Yes. It'll tell you in inches, although to me, I've gotten so used to seeing the metrics that I can live with that. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what you like. Yeah. I'm getting more used to it, but sometimes I have to do it in inches because I'm looking for a very specific size and I don't want to tax my brain power that much. <laughs> I have this little, little three foot ruler that has, you know, a little um, tape measure that winds up that has inches and, and metrics one next to the other. And I just pull that out and say, okay. <laughs> All right. So, anything else for today? Nope. 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 I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. No, this was good. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Good. So, next time I expect to see some cool cut work projects. <laughs> oh, springs and tunnel. You know that. <laughs> so, okay. Friday is software class and yes. you have to put up with me again um because we're finishing what we started in march we'll be finishing that project although somebody i know has already finished it <laughs> <laughs> well did you make the placemat i did not um i did a thing for my mom i think i showed 
Do you have it? Can you show us? Yes, I do. Hold on a second. And we'll miss you, Miss Elizabeth, on Friday. Yes. Well, I'll, I'll be thinking about you all in church. We can pray for all. I'll be praying for you all in church. <laughs> oh, okay. That was our technique class. Yeah, oh, that's not what you meant, was it? Sorry. Oh, that turned out neat. Did you, uh, but you yeah. had it there. That's what I'm thinking of. Can we see that? Oh. Oh, wow. How nice. Oh, yeah. my. That's great. You don't have, do you have the, the ribbon, the ribbon attachment? Oh, no. No, I'm uh, kind of broke at the moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's how that goes. Okay. Well, okay. Well, bye. All of you have a happy Easter. You too. <laughs> and pray, pray for us now, Liz. <laughs> well, bye. 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 Bye, ladies. Thank you so much. Uh, bye. bye.